So we need to be able to model a planetary system and model its atmosphere so we can see what it's going to appear when we look at it from Earth. So Paul, what are the steps that we need to do to do that? Well, we're going to have to start off by working out what this planet is made out of. So we could just guess it's the same as Jupiter, or we could look at the composition of the star that it orbits around and assume it's going to be the same as that, only but probably with a bit less hydrogen and helium that can get trapped or something like that. And we can, so we can change that around, but you know, obviously start with what a planet looks like in our solar system and change it accordingly. Right? Yes. So we have we any know, freedom we want. To we know that. very accurately what Jupiter is made of because the Galileo's dropped a probe into it and actually measured it in situ. So right. um, these things will probably be different, but probably not too different. So that's, mm. that's, that's fairly easy, yep. at least until we get some hideous surprise. And then we have to think about how the gas is situated around the star. So, Paul, if I have a cubic meter of gas here in this room. Which we do. Which we do. Breathing. And then we ask ourselves, well, that cubic meter of gas weighs roughly a kilogram. Yeah. Why doesn't it fall to the ground like if I was holding a ball and I dropped that? Yeah, so here's something else that weighs a kilogram. Yeah, so that's a kilogram. That, when I drop, falls. And the gas in this room weighs the same amount. Doesn't. Maybe you can explain that. Yeah, because I mean, gas air weighs a lot, so why isn't it falling down? Well, there must be, as there's a downward gravitational force in the gas, there must be some equal opposite force upwards to keep it balanced and stop it falling down. Now, we have air pressure. There's air pressure at the bottom, and there's air pressure at the sides, and air pressure at the top. You might think that would all cancel out. But if it did cancel out, it would fall to the bottom. Right, because gravity would pull it down. Yeah, so there has to be more pressure at the bottom of this cube than at the top. And indeed, that's what's happened. The air is thicker, lower, and as you go higher, you don't notice it in this room, but if you climb a mountain, you notice it very much. But yep. even within this room, the air at the top is going to be a bit lower pressure than the air at the bottom. And so it's high pressure air at the bottom, gives more upward force than the downward force at the top, and that's what keeps this air from falling to the ground. Okay. And so exactly the same thing happens in a planet. So let's say we take this planet, and let's do an imaginary sphere. Now, the sphere is being sucked by gravity towards the middle, so why doesn't it fall down? Presumably because the pressure here is able to balance out, uh, the pressure gradient is able to balance out the, 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 the gravity. Right, so that gives us the first equation. Um, I'll put it in words here. So basically, for each shell, there must be more pressure on the inside out than there is on the outside in. Yeah. And the difference between those two gives you the gravitational pull on this, which will be the mass times whatever the gravity is there. And so this is, we're assuming the, the star or the planet is in equilibrium. It's not, you know, getting bigger or smaller or vibrating. Yeah, we assume it's just sitting there. Right. So that means we can make sure that those things are equal to each yes. other. Yes. So this is a, what, the first equation for planet structure, and it's also used for studying the structure of stars and other things like that. Yep. Um, so that's one thing, and that's going to be helpful because it tells us um, what the density and the pressure must be at each level. Okay. Uh, next thing would be look at heat. Um, in this case, the heat is presumably leaking out. So you've got all the heat from when it first formed, and that's being radiated away from the surface. So once again, we look at any given shell, the shell or any other shell at any other distance, and there'll be heat coming in, which could be coming by radiation or by convection or conduction, the normal ways that heat can go from one place to another. Yep. And there'll be heat leaving at the outer surface here. And the difference between the two is going to give us a change in the thermal energy of that ring. Okay. So it's a bit like the specific heat capacity times the temperature or something like this. Yep. So that's our second equation. So if we know the densities, we can then work out how the pressure must vary because it must be able to balance them. If we know the temperatures, the temperature flow, we must be able to work out the temperature at different points because it must be balancing it. Then we need the chemistry. So at any given level, we'll know the temperature and the pressure and we can work out the, um, what chemical reactions happen. So we do all the normal rate equations, how your hydrogen forms of this and forms of that, and balance them all out, get them in equilibrium, and you get sort of plots like this. And so basically, different uh, chemical compounds can only exist at certain temperatures and densities is, is what it comes down to. And this diagram sort of tells you uh, the temperature, at least, of where these things can For be one particular formed. pressure. Yeah. So for example, you're not getting water, H2O, when it's too low because it's all frozen. This is only the stuff that's in the gas form. So then it boils up here. Um, you, then you get um, methane, ammonia. You get things like titanium dioxide, vanadium oxide, which come vanadium in. Vanadium oxide. Hot. Now there's something you're not going to find around Earth very easily. 
Yes, considering it only starts becoming a gas at above um, 1700 Kelvin. That's not that hot on the Earth, generally speaking. So you can solve these equations, and that will tell you, if you know the temperature and the pressure, what you'd expect to get in the chemistry. So that all sounds pretty straightforward. However, there is a problem. What this is all giving us is if, um, if we know the temperature and the pressure, we can calculate the chemical composition. So it's a yes. one-way reaction. However, unfortunately, it also goes the other way around. It turns out that the composition also affects the temperature. Presumably because we saw that things like methane, methane blocks lots of light coming out, and so it will sort of control how much heat can travel through the star, for example. That's right.